Hi viewers, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. I thank you for more subscribers, those that are all new subscribers, those that have been sharing my link. I thank you and appreciate you so much. Thank you so much once again. It's in News Namibia here and uh, we have an aim that would like to, we have a target for this year. I mean, we would like to hit a thousand subscribers in the next few months, but without you, it will not be possible. So that's why I'm urging you that to please you need to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so and you're watching this video you please need to share the link or share the videos and tell all your loved ones and friends and whoever it is to please subscribe to my channel so that they can help me achieve my goal thank you so much so today's story time is about um losing a loved one like losing a loved one i lost my dad for those that knows me i lost him um nine months before my wedding so um it was a very sad moment it was very sad and uh it's the man that i've been looking up to growing up like he made most uh, things possible in my life he made it possible that i went to school i was in a hostel he paid most of my school fees and so on and he made just life seem so easy because the reason being um i'm his firstborn i'm my father's firstborn and um so far the only daughter i have a daughter i have a, a sister somewhere but it's uh, there's some contradictions so yeah so uh, my father only had me as a firstborn and my younger brother so in this case i was his i was close to my father's heart like i was my father's favorite you guys so being your father's favorite guys it's so i had experienced that and it's so nice and i thought somehow my father was going to live by me forever and i just somehow feel like he was he, he went too soon because he did not uh, get to eat the fruits of my of, of his hard work like he have like we haven't just spent enough time after then i realized that um or after after then i okay after i grew then to, to to develop more and more love and realize that uh he loves and appreciate he loves me so much and he's very proud of me so what happened is that my father was i'll make i'll i'll try to cut this story my father was working in the army he was he's a soldier and actually an ex-combatant so that man was a very hard working man like my father was so strong like i've never seen a stronger man on this earth than my father so i will say my father was um he was he was really strong like he was he was having a stronger personality and he was uh, a go-getter he was a go-getter like um somewhere somehow i feel like the confidence i have it's coming from my dad and i think that's it so uh, he was in the army until this other year i cannot remember but it's many many years back he while at work he just suddenly got blind like he couldn't see but the eyes were open he got blind and then they've been struggling with medical doctors and so on but um, to no avail so at the end of the day he just uh, had to go on early retirement he went on early retirement so he was in at home in Novamberland, in the northern part of the country of Namibia. So he was then then at home with my stepmom, such a sweetheart, a good woman that really took care of my dad and um my stepmom's children. Do I say children like kids from her yeah, I will say her nieces and her nephews because they were living there by with her. So it's an interesting story that was, but it was a house that was really um in order so until few months no not before that okay when i was at school when i was in high school i will go mostly mainly my school holidays i go to my dad because when i grew up i didn't grow up um on my mother's um, on my maternal family on my maternal part of family i grew up on the paternal side of my family so i mainly used to go to my dad for school holidays I'll go to my dad, guys. As I said, my father was blind. He could not see. He was not limited to any movement or he was not limited to anything. That man would, the day I have to go back to school, he would take me to the buses to go catch a bus as blind as he is. 
just me and him you go in there catch a bus i go on a bus and then he find his way back home but uh, people in the community they were so helpful so yeah so until luckily after my grade after my my my, my secondary school um, after my high school i when mean, i've then been um home for a while i've been home for a while and then um spend some time together until the day that he even passed like i've seen him the day before he passed what happened is that uh we were on the i was on the way we were on a trip it was actually my birthday month because i uh, my birthday is in february so we were on a trip somewhere in the northern part of the country like a poor side there uh, with my husband and then we were on a trip and uh, while we were traveling on that very same day, I think it was around the around the 16th of February, we traveled like back to Venduk. And then on our way, on our way, we got a call that no, my father is in the hospital, he's not feeling well. So my husband advised me that no, we need to turn back, go sleep in Ndangwa, go see your dad if it's possible. Visiting hours are on the yeah, visiting hours that time in the hospital is around 6 o'clock in the evening and then 6 o'clock again in the morning, I think. So we had to drive back, book a hotel in Ondangwa, slept there. And then, no, before we slept, I went to see my dad that evening. I think it was on the 5th. It was on the 16th of February. I saw him, yes, in the evening. And that night, my father was talking, guys, because he had been bed, he had been so much ill. He, he was very ill. And to the point that he wasn't even speaking for a while, but that 16th of February, my father was speaking. Like, I, I was like, so he waited for me to come here so that he can just start talking again. Like, he spoke to me and held my hands, you know, that love. Like, he held my hands so tight and it was so emotional. And then later, I, but he was, they put him on oxygen that time. And then I left, I went. So while we were in the hotel room, I could not sleep. Something just came to my mind, like, what if my father goes? Knowingly that yes, I have, I have, uh, he have actually taken care of me, and I feel like now I can see the way. I can still, I, I, the path is clear. I can do, then I can still go ahead and continue from where he left. So um, I was worried that see my father now it's too early, and I was just hoping that he can live until the uh, until he sees until he witnessed me getting married because it was in that very same year. So um, I had some dreams like talking to him and talking to him and so that. So the next day on the 17th of February, I went to see him in the morning before we departed then for our trip to Venduk. I went to see my dad. He was still doing well because that same day he was having some dreams because in the past few days when he was ill, he could not eat or drink anything really. So he was eating and so on. So I was like, okay. My father is fine, so I can travel now to Venduk and see when again I can come back and see him. So we travel on the 17th. On the 18th was, um, we're celebrating a birthday. So we're busy celebrating a birthday and we're out there having some fun. So just around 6 o'clock, yeah, after 6 in the evening, my phone was even in the bag, I think, in the car. Well, something told me, go to your phone, go get your phone. Then I went to the phone. I found missed calls from my cousins, you guys. I'm like, then I called my one of my cousins back. I'm like, hello. Like, so excited, man. What is it? What do you want? She's like, oh, are you okay? I'm like, yes, I'm okay. Haven't you heard something? And I was like, oh, I heard something. Don't tell me that my father is gone. And I'm like, no, what is it? That your father is no more, guys. And I was like, ah. Not true, she must be joking. So I said, Okay, it's fine. I hang up, and then I call my mom, the one that, that, that now brought me up. I call her, I didn't ask her, I just say hello. She's like, Yeah, Sherry, how are you? And what, what? I'm like, No, I'm very fine. Then she's like, My condolences. And I'm like, So it's true because there's no way my mom was going to. I didn't expect even my cousin to do such jokes, but for me, it was just like, No, it can't, it can't be true. Then I'm like, Oh, okay, so it's, it's fine. So my friend, my best friend at that time, she was also in Venduk, so she had to come to us at the hotel and then she came to sleep at us just to, keep, to make sure that, yes, I'm fine. Guys, I did not believe it that my dad was gone because it, that man was so close. He was so dear to me. And I just thought that um, 
he was going to live longer. The way he was praising and people that knows man, he he would talk so much about me like like ugh, I was just his. Uh, sorry, I'm getting emotional. Like he would talk so much good about me, and um, so I I just thought it was not yet time because we we're just trying to get more and more closer. And I remember one day he 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 told me a story saying that uh, there was a day that um, his colleague or his roommate, his roommate was um, apparently very drunk. He was actually apparently was having a, a roommate that drinks so much at the base at the military base. So apparently that that roommate drank a lot that evening, and then he 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 dreamed. My father was apparently my, that man was dreaming. Then my father could see his roommate standing up, getting up from bed, and then putting on the light, taking a paper and a pen, and then apparently he wrote numbers. I don't know how my father could see. He wrote numbers apparently in some some name street name. Then he went back to sleep. The next morning, apparently, he said to my father, Oh, John, let's go. Uh, I, I have to go pick up my daughter. They said my daughter is where, where she came to see me and she's living at a house somewhere. So I need to go and, um, and, see, and pick her up or I need to go and see her. Then my father was like, Who told you? No, they called me. There's a number that called me. Oh, okay. This number that called you. So my father then went, apparently. He had a paper. That man had a paper that he wrote then the previous night. With the number and the earth number. I, no, so the earth number and the street name. So my father was like, no, let me not fight with you. Let us just go. So apparently they went. They went. When they drove, they went to that house. <laughs> and they are like, ah, we are here. We are looking for the wolf. Oh, oh, oh. oh, guys, my daughter is making noise. And I can't stand this. I don't know why she's doing this to me. So um, they, they, there is a number. They said, daughter of mine here, this house. I was called that she's here, this house. She came from uh, from the village yesterday, so I'm the father, and I would like to see her. So apparently they were speaking in, in Oshuambo. So only for the other people to respond in, in another different language. I think they were Zimbabweans, and they didn't understand each other. So my father was like, so maybe the, so apparently the man said, my father asked the man, is like, oh, are you sure? Who called you? Can we call back that number that called you and told me about this? And then what happened? Apparently, uh, that man said, no, wait, I think I was dreaming. So my father was so annoyed because he left whatever he was supposed to do just to come for this. And he saw that man writing down stuff. But because apparently the man likes to debate, my father could not, um, could not debate with him and say, no, I saw you writing. I think you were dreaming. So he just like, no, let me please you and let us just go so that you can... Maybe maybe it's true also that you can go see for yourself. So guys, I miss that man so much. And I have so much story time to tell you guys about my dad. And this year, this year 2023, next week, he will be making is it six years after he passed? Six or seven years. Just hold on. Uh, um, yeah, this will be his sixth year then that he will be away from me guys so yeah somebody out there so i just miss my dad and i love and appreciate that man and i'll never ever forget that man so he made it possible for me if it wasn't for my dad i wouldn't be where i am i wouldn't be where i am guys so if those that are having fathers or mothers please let us honor them while they're still alive i'm left with a mother and i just wish i could show her